So we are going to go into a lot of handling errors in our class, but there is a lot that could go wrong with software development. Syntax errors are probably the easiest to protect against because your program won't build if there is a syntax error in your code. Logic errors can be difficult to spot because they don't cause the program to crash or to not build. The program runs, but it doesn't do what you intended for it to do, and it might not be obvious how or what's going wrong. Runtime errors can cause your program to crash or generate errors or otherwise make it so your program no longer functions correctly. This could be caused by a logic error, a user error, an error by someone extending your original code work, or by something else. We can try to write our software so that no errors ever occur, but can you ever really be certain that it's 100% bug free, or that the user themselves will never cause an error? There are techniques we can use to kind of mitigate these problems, though. We can use testing to test for any errors that might appear before we release our software. We can use testing to search for runtime errors and logic errors. We can have a tester manually go through the software and go through test plans and make sure things are running as they're supposed to. We can write automated tests that continue testing the software and running through kind of repetitive tasks over and over. So anytime there's a change, that if an automated test fails, it notes that something went wrong, something changed. Or we could write unit tests that test each unit of code, like a single function, separately. And that's another way to ensure that when your code is changing, your program isn't inadvertently breaking. We can also follow certain design principles to try to minimize the likelihood of errors manifesting due to bad code, bad changes to the code, bad processes being followed, and by ensuring code is reviewed by multiple developers before being added to the overall code base so it doesn't break everybody else's code. We can also add code into our program to look out for errors that we know might happen and handle it appropriately and cleanly if it does occur so the program can still function, or at least clean up without causing problems to saved data or the system itself. Software can be extremely fragile, and the software engineering field is not really an engineering field like civil engineering is, where there's a definite set of guidelines in order to ensure that the product functions and is safe, or even to ensure that development happens in a certain amount of time and within a certain budget. We're not really operating under, like, the laws of physics that are testable, and we know that the laws of physics are never going to change. It's not really that concrete of a field. So who's responsible for making sure the software functions, is secure, or at least breaks safely? How big is the risk associated with any given product? Well, depending on the field you're in, it could be pretty negligible, or it could be very important where if you're working on vehicle software like for cars or airplanes, you really don't want to mess stuff up. If you're working with legal software, you really don't want people losing their files or having their data corrupted. But when it's like a video game, yeah, you could get some angry customers if your game doesn't work and has a lot of bugs, but nobody's going to die. If an airplane's software encounters an error, it can't just reboot its system or restart its software mid-flight. If a legal case depends on documents from a business, loss or corruption of those documents due to software failure could be very costly. For personal software, it could just be losing some data or some time by messing around with it, but low-quality software can lead to loss of money, privacy, security, or even life. Luckily, nobody's life is depending on our programming assignments. But what can we do to try to build stable software? Well, what are some ways that we can handle the errors that do pop up? Sometimes we could get errors from trying to open and read a file that doesn't exist. Or we could get memory access violations. Or we could try to do some invalid math. Or maybe the computer doesn't have enough memory to do something. Or maybe we're receiving a data type as input that is incompatible with what we're currently expecting. Like, we want a integer and the user gives us a letter. We could simply check against invalid input, but are we always going to know what input is invalid ahead of time? What if we're using someone else's code and there's an error? How do we detect it? What do we do when the program has an error? An old way of handling errors is to return an error code like zero for fine and other numbers for other problems, which 
usually the programmer would know, but the user might not. So, for example, here, the user can't tell what went wrong and can't hope to try to avoid the problematic behavior or to fix it. We can write our software to handle errors so that an error happens and an exception is thrown. And the caller knows that the exceptions could occur while using this specific code, so it tries the code and it is ready to catch exceptions. Then, its catch code looks at the exception and safely handles that exception. When an exception is caught, control of the program is transferred to a handler, but to detect any thrown exceptions, we have to be listening for it. We use the try keyword to do this. The C++ standard library also provides an exception class object that we can extend if we want and add error messages and special types. Here's a list of some of the exception types from the C++ standard library. You don't have to know these or memorize these, they're just here for reference, and you can always look them up online if you need them. So, let's add some error handling. Say that we're writing a function where we could potentially be doing a division by zero. We would need to throw an exception if this happens. We could throw different data types, we could use an integer error code, or we could use a string error message, or we could use an exception object from the standard library. Then, when our function is put into practice, we would need to have a try surrounding the call to that function. Also, the catch parameter needs to be the same data type as the one we are throwing. When our program runs, it will display the error message, if we want it to, and then it will continue. So try wraps the function call, or a portion of code that we know has a throw in it. Catch handles the error that we receive. There can be multiple catches for different types of exceptions. And from within the code that may cause a problem, we throw that problem if it's detected. If you do not catch an exception, the default behavior for C++ is to terminate the program. Even if you have a catch written, it might not be looking for the right type of exception. So for the example above, it is looking for the catch to handle the string, but in the program we modified it so it only handles an int exception. You can specify that your program might throw, and what kind of exceptions it will throw, during the function declaration and function definition. So if you have nothing specified, the function could throw anything. With this declaration and definition, we are saying that our function will only throw an exception of type string. As a note about bad practice, don't wrap your entire program in a single try-catch block. Also, try to wrap your try-catch around the smallest amount of code possible. Okay, so let's write a small program that uses try-catch and throw.